we've talked about three different kinds of business entities. There's all kinds of subversions of it, but for the most part, sole proprietorships, 72% of all businesses are sole proprietorships. Then you have partnerships, which is two or more people working together, but really one of the very best forms, and this is the one that I always recommend, is that of a corporation as you go through. It really is critical, and there's, we're going to talk about three different kinds of corporations in the segment over here, but that said, there's different sub-variations on them, but for the most part, they're all fit into this version over here. One is called the C-Corp, or a conventional corporation as you go through. Another one is a sub-chapter S. You know, I wish it really was something really cool. Super corporation! But it's not. It's just part of the IRS tax code. So it's not really that cool. But don't tell anybody. Anyway, then you also have what's called an LLC, which is called a limited liability corporation as you go through. So on these three, what the big advantage is that there's a limited liability. In this case, when you form a corporation, you're forming a separate entity. It's not you anymore. This is a different person from a legal perspective as you go through. So that being said, this one over here, if something does go awry from a financial basis, the only thing anybody could ever go through with that corporation is strip it of its assets as they go through. You get to keep your personal house, your car, all your personal money as you go through, and your family gets to stay intact too. There's no indentured servitude in the process. But that being said, over here, this is a separate entity from you. It protects you as an individual, which is why I always recommend going through a corporation. The ones that generally we'll be talking about is a subchapter S and an LLC. A C Corp, as you go through, really is about a larger corporation model. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And by the way, Anyone can incorporate, a truck driver, a doctor, a plumber, an athlete, a small business owner can all incorporate and it's a smart move to make as you go through. It doesn't cost that much money to form a corporation. You may have to pay a little bit more to file taxes and such like that, but the reality is all of us, pretty much if you're gonna go in business, can really legally afford to do it and it's a smart move to do. Normally stock's not issued to outsiders when they incorporate, except with a C corporation. There's a lot of major advantages to limited liability and possible tax benefits as you go through. And a lot of companies on the internet can provide a service to you at a low fee for a corporation as you go through. Now the advantages, there's limited liability, there's the ability to raise more money for investment by selling shares in a corporation for a C-Corp and an S-Corp, not so much for the LLC. The size, you can actually expand much more rapidly than a sole proprietorship. There's a perpetual life for the C-Corp and the S-Corp. And the, that way, once you sit down and want to retire, you can sell the stock or give the stock to the next generation or somebody else. They can actually buy your corporation by buying the stock in it. So it can actually live well past the, the founder's uh, retirement or, or death as it goes through. Then you always, that's how you change your ownership. So it's a, you can track more talented employees as well because it's a corporation rather than just a one person shop as you go through. And there's a separation from the ownership and the management in a corporation as you go through. A disadvantage, it does cost more money than a sole proprietorship. Just depends how big you think your business is gonna be. There's more paperwork as you go through. C corporations have an issue called called double taxation. And by that is that the government goes through and they tax the corporation. And then when the corporation distributes its profit, the people that get the profit called the shareholders, they have to pay tax on that again as you go through. So if the tax rate for the corporation is 21%, okay, then the corporation pays 21% taxes. If the individual gets a distribution or a dividend from the company as you go through and they pay 28%, all senior paying 21% initially, and then all the shareholders pay 28%, Gee, you're paying 49% of all the profits of the corporation to the government, and you're only really reaping 51% of the actual profit as you go through. That's a, that's a C Corp issue. Uh, on, the, uh, on the taxes, C Corp, there's a separate tax return for the entity. On an S Corp, you have to file a separate tax return, but it's not a big deal on the S Corp because it still is what we call flow through taxation. It goes right to your bottom line, your house. And the C Corp, the, the profit actually is a dividend as you go through. The size can be bigger as you go through, maybe more difficult, and they're hard to terminate because they have that opportunity to be a perpetual life, at least in the C Corp and the S Corp as you go through. Sometimes, <clears throat> There's a stock, a stock, a, a, a conflict between the stockholders and the management as you go through. 
So here is the C Corp as you go through all corporations, you file them with your local state that you're doing your beginning business in as you go through. Uh, you can also change that later on, but generally the state's gonna look for their own tax base from the corporation as you go through. The paperwork can be a bit intimidating, but for a C, <coughs> C Corp, you can get a 403B planning, which really helps you an awful lot as a corporation, but the paperwork is, is bigger and usually it's established for larger corporations that intend to sell stock in the stock market. You can see here that a lot of times the C Corp, if you sell stock, depends how you sell it privately, individually, maybe on a limited basis on an over-the-counter stock sell. By the time you're all done, every time you sell a share of stock, you're selling part of the ownership of the business. And by the way, you have to have an annual meeting when you sell stock, and those owners, those stockholders have a right to be heard. And by the way, they have a right to vote who sits on your board of directors. So all of a sudden, you're sitting there, you start your corporation, you sell all the stock, you got lots of capital coming in, and then the whole process, you feel, whoa, I'm on top of the world. And all of a sudden, you find out that you have a board of directors, and they don't like you anymore, and they want to fire you kind of like they did Steve Jobs. You own the company, but out you go because they want somebody new, somebody fresh, and boom, you're gone as you go out there. So that being said, you really look at the whole aspect of it. You've got the officers, the managers, and, and the employees. It's a great model, except you kind of really make certain you're running it well according to the views of your board of directors. In S Corp, it's a unique government creation. It looks like a corporation, but it's taxed like a sole proprietorship or a partnership as you go through. The, the S Corps have shareholders, directors, and employees, plus they have that benefit of the limited liability perk. Their, their profits are taxed only one time as a personal income. We call it a pass-through taxation as you go through. It really, in today's market, the S-Corp depends what your long-term goals are. In today's economy and the way the laws are structured, there's a little bit of advantage on an S-Corp over an LLC. But an S-Corp and an LLC are both the models always recommended for a small business startup as you go through. S-Corp's got a couple of qualifications to it, no more than 100 shareholders. That's not 100 shares of stock, but shareholders as you go through. There's only one class of stock called common stock. You can only drive no more than 25% from passive income sources. In other words, from investments as you go through. Uh, so, so really the S Corp is a really positive way of doing it. Another way of actually having a corporation is called an LLC or a limited liability corporation. You got that same excellent protection as a corporation, but without the eligibility requirements that are out there. The only thing is that you have the limited liability. You can choose the taxation, which gets more complicated. You have to see me at a different time uh, presenting on this specific topic. An LLC, let me just give you, a, 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 a you can tax it as a sole proprietorship, but you can also tax it as an escort. It gets a bit complicated over there, but that being said, there's a really smart reason for doing that. There's flexible ownership rules. There's a flexible distribution of, of profits and losses. It's all flow through income again as you go through. But the disadvantage, there's no stock, so the ownership's not transferable. When the LLC founders step off the scene, th then whoever comes in after them, they may buy the, buy the organization, but the LLC is dissolved. It has to be reformed with somebody else in charge of it. That's where you have a limited lifespan. And the taxes, it, it really is one of the aspects of it flows through with more taxes and a bit of paperwork as you go through. So by the time you're all done, you got three kinds. Generally, the C Corp is used for large corporations as you go through. The S Corp and the LLC for small businesses. A big advantage is that flow through taxation. That C Corp, you have that double taxation issue, which really irks people, but you make up for it by the volume of revenue that you make. In the S Corp, you have a limitation of 100 shareholders with the one class of stock, and the LLC has no stock, and the LLC ends with the owner. But overall, this is an excellent model for you to choose as, as, you, as, a, as a business structure for you to organize your business. Take care.